Okay, let's go ahead and figure out this nice little math word problem here. And anytime you're trying to figure out anything in mathematics, the first step is always to read the problem. So let's go ahead and do that right now. It says a rug design has 22 dots per square foot. How many dots are in a 12 by 18 foot rug? So if you think you can figure this uh, problem out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section and feel free to use a calculator. But here's the deal, even though a lot of you are gonna be able to do this problem pretty easily, I would ask you to think about how you would justify your conclusions, right? How would you, how would you back up your answer? In other words, uh, let's suppose that this was an exam question or a test question where if you didn't write anything down on your paper, you wouldn't get any credit, okay? You had to prove absolutely your results, okay? So sometimes when you just get your calculator out and you just come up with a number, even though you might be right, I want you to think in terms of backing up your conclusion. So we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, as I walk through this problem here, but I don't you know, want to give you too many hints because I want to give you an opportunity to solve this all on your own. I'm actually going to show you the correct result to this problem in just one second, and then we're going to go through the uh, steps one at a time. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. It's my true passion to help people uh, learn mathematics. I'm gonna tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that are having a tough time in math. It really doesn't make a difference if you failed math or if you're failing math right now, you can turn this all around. Okay, so there is hope. Here's the three things you need in order to be successful in math. One you got to be willing to work hard, okay? Now, some people, you know, math comes easier to them, but everybody, you know, so they may, you might think that, yeah, they don't need to work as hard as I need to work, but listen, everybody that studies mathematics has to still put in the effort, okay? So that's the first thing. you got to be willing to put in the effort. The second thing you need is encouragement. In other words, if you're struggling in math right now, you can't think to yourself, well, it's just a waste of time if I work hard because there's no hope for me. I'm just naturally a bad math student. That's not true. I'm telling you, don't give up. You need encouragement. But the most important thing you need is great math instruction. Math is a technical subject, okay? And if you learn math uh, from someone or something in a very technical way, like a textbook, it could be very confusing. I mean, that's not your fault that you're being taught math in that manner. The way I like to teach math is I like to explain concepts in an easy to understand way for all students, okay, without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that has math on it that you're getting ready for, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes uh, in the description as well. Most students take average math notes at best. Some students don't take any notes. You know who takes great notes? Those students that end up with grades like this. If you want excellent grades, if you want to do well in math, an immediate uh, thing you can do right now, it's kind of like one of the best hacks you can start doing is take start taking awesome math notes okay that requires focus and you paying attention so look at your notes that's a good indicator of how well you're going to do in mathematics and if this video helps you out don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out okay so let's get into this problem and uh, what are the first three steps to any math word problem well step number one is to read the problem step number two is to reread the problem and step number three is to make sure you understand exactly what the question is so you're probably gonna have to read the question again so a rug design has 22 dots per square foot how many dots are in a 12 by 18 foot rug so how many dots are in this rug that is the question let's go ahead and show you the answer right now all right, so 4,752 dots, that is the answer. This was a very easy problem, but uh, nevertheless, if you got this problem right, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars so you can kind of tell your friends and families that you got this problem right today, right? So you want to, you know, show off, but hey, listen, I was able to figure this problem out. I'm pretty awesome in math. Listen, that's a good feeling when you're able to solve a problem. Okay, so if you didn't get this thing right, listen, don't panic. Let's go ahead and talk about this right now. 
So as I indicated, anytime you're uh, faced with a math word problem, you want to read it more than a uh, more than once. The worst thing you could do is read the read a problem one time and go, oh, I understand everything that's going on, and just start doing some math. You don't want to do that, even though you may understand the problem. There's a there's a lot of information in math word problems, so you want to read it again at a minimum time, a minimum twice. Okay, you want to uh, really you know, stay away from reading the prom just one time and just start doing stuff, okay? So that's the first thing. Read the prom and really make sure you understand what's going on. Now, the second thing you wanna do is model the information in the problem. And you could do this in all different types of ways. And by the way, uh, you could do this in your own special way, right? So your work can look different than my work, but you wanna try to model what's going on. Sometimes you could do that by a sketch or drawing a little figure or using a table, etc. So again, uh, your way of doing it might be uh, different than uh, my way, but you wanna model the information so you can kind of see what's going on visually, all right? So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we're dealing with the rug, okay, a 12 by 18 foot rug. So, you know, the way I kind of did it was this way. So here is a rug. It's 12 feet by eight, uh, 18 foot. It's a rectangular rug, okay, so here's a rug. Now we are uh, told, okay, and this is why we have to kind of go back to the problem that a rug design has 22 dots per square foot. So what does that mean? What's a square foot? Well, a square foot is a square, and it's a one foot by one foot square, and there's 22 dots in there, something like this, right? So visually, you can kind of see what's going on. So this would be the design. You know, I don't know if this is a good looking rug or not, but anyways, you kind of get the idea. We want to figure out, well, if there's 22 dots per square foot, and this whole rug is 18 feet by 12 feet, okay, how many total dots are in this entire rug. So that is the problem. You kind of see it visually what's going on. So what do we have to do here? Well, we're dealing with square feet, right? One foot by one foot. This is one square uh, feet. So it's probably a pretty good idea to figure out how many square feet are in this entire rug. So how can we do that? Well, uh, fortunately, we're given... Um, the dimensions of this rug in feet. So we're dealing with the same units of measure here. So to figure out total square footage, okay, which is basically area of the rug, okay. Remember area is in units squared, so feet squared or, or square feet. So figure out the total square feet of this rug, we simply need to multiply the length times the width, right? So the area of a rug is length times the width. So it would just be this, uh, side times this side. So 12 times 18 or 18 times 12 is going to be 216, but 216 what? Well, it's feet times feet or feet squared. So this entire rug has 216 square feet. All right. Now, if we know one square foot has 22 dots and we have 216 square feet, well, how many dots uh, do we have in this entire rug? Well, pretty easy, right? So again, one square foot has 22 dots. We have 216 square feet. So all we need to do is multiply 22, right, by that 216, and we end up with 4,752 dots, okay, because that's how many uh, square feet we have, right? We have uh, 216 square feet for every square foot there's going to be 22 dots, just 22 times how many square feet we have, and that's how we get our final answer. So this is how what I'm talking about in terms of justifying your results. If you just you know did this problem and you gave your teacher this, right? Let's say uh, on your exam here was the question, and there's a bunch of white space here, okay, blank space on a on a written exam, and you just put this answer down. Oftentimes, teachers are not going to be happy with that. Okay, they're going to be like, "Hey, where uh, right answer?" There used to be a, a teacher I used to have way back in the good old days. I think somewhere in my high school year, it was something like "right answer, no work" or something. They had these like crazy expressions. So you know, they're going to say like, "I'm not giving you credit because you didn't prove to me. You're not telling me." 
that you understand the process. Teachers are more interested in what you understand, okay, what skills, how you're thinking. They don't really care about the final answer nearly as much because where can you get this final answer? Well, I hate to say it, okay, sometimes, and you're going to be very shocked when I tell you this, all right, you're going to be like, no, that really happens? Yes, sometimes students look at other people's uh, exams and then they'll put that answer on their exam, okay? Yes, that really does happen in real life, and none of you out there probably ever have done that, okay? Well, I'll be the first to admit, have I ever cheated on an exam? I'm probably sure, I'm pretty sure I did way back in the good old, you know, maybe my middle school days or high school days. I'm pretty sure I was uh, trying to get away from, um, you know, get, getting away from work and figuring things out if I have an opportunity. Maybe I was doing that. I certainly, listen, I'll say it, um, and I hate to say it, but I will admit it. Yes, I even cut class a couple times way back in the good old 1980s. But anyways, listen, I turned that all around after I went to the Marine Corps and got serious about learning mathematics. And that's the thing. You have to get serious about learning math, right? If you're looking for shortcuts, then that's how you're going to become frustrated. That's how you're not going to do well. That's how you're going to end up hating math. Okay, there is no shortcuts. You have to approach learning this subject, you know, uh, with kind of an attitude of commitment. All right, so one skill at a time, do the work, and just kind of build up momentum. Ultimately, you're going to be very successful, but it does take time. So if you need help in basic math or something like this, I would say this is kind of maybe middle school level mathematics. I'm going to suggest uh, my uh, pre-algebra course if you're kind of like at that middle school level. If you're getting back into learning math again uh, and you just need a quick refresher course, I would suggest something like my Math Foundations uh, mini course, just a three chapter basic course on basic mathematics, a quick review from the things that you learn in elementary school. But anyways, if you go to my math health program, I have all level maths uh, for all of you out there, irrespective of what course you might be in. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.